How did it feel to get your first career interception? Um, you know, I was hoping it'd be happier circumstances after that, but you know, glad that I was able to provide our offense with the opportunity. You know, um, felt good, could feel better, but um, yeah, just not satisfied with the win and with the loss or anything like that. So, still trying to get over that. <laughs> What's what, what do you guys view? You know, the run game is obviously stopping the runs an emphasis that you guys haven't been able to do successfully, consistently in the last couple of games. What's the step that you have to take? Um, it starts with practice. Um, in practice, we, you know, try to play it safe, you know. No one's really tackling across the nation during practice, but um, as far as being physical, we need to practice being more physical. Um, we play really soft against the run, as you've seen in the past games, and that's because of the way we practice. We just kind of just run off and do a little two-hand touch in practice when we should be, you know, getting our chest and everything into it. And I feel like just that mindset and that practice and habit-wise during the week, that would help a lot on Saturdays. How do you feel like you guys are doing, particularly the linebackers, doing it as shedding blocks? Because it seemed like they'd get helmet on a helmet and you guys had a tough time getting off those blocks to make those, you know, kind of fill those seams. How do you feel like the team's doing that? Um, it's been very improved throughout the season, honestly. Um, the problem is numbers. We're just getting outnumbered on the edge. Um, so it was linebackers against a tight end and a pulling guard pretty much the whole game on that counter run that they're playing. And so, you know, you can get hands on and be as physical as you want, but when you got two more guys to work through, it's, it's pretty hard to make that tackle. So as far as number, it's really just a numbers game on the outside. So is it a scheme thing where you see that the scheme's going to have to change to be able to, equal, you know, to, to fix the numbers issue? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's only on the scheme. It was a lot of it's just players trying to make plays, you know. And so a lot of times when you do that, you can get out of position, and that could, you know, end up in a result, what we got, you know, just outnumbering on the outside. So I feel like for the most part, it's just the mental part of the game for the players that we need to step up and, you know, play within our assignments while trying to make plays at the same time. Coach Tuiaki puts a lot of emphasis on the, the front line, the defensive line, and that 4-3 to stop the run. But how much ownership do you guys kind of in that second level take on, on run stopping and backing up those guys and, and making sure that, you know, they don't get those extra yards and that kind of thing? Do yeah, we take a lot of responsibility. I mean, as a linebacker, that's what your job is, is to read the gaps and shoot them. And, you know, as linebackers, if you're not doing that, then they're going to get those extra yards. So, you know, we got to play more on our toes, ready to come downhill. Because we can't wait for the ball to come to us. That's how they get those little five yards and maybe break a tackle and it ends up being 25. <laughs> so we need to be able to come up and meet them at the line of scrimmage more. Talk to the guys and talk to, to Kalani. He's taken a lot on himself. You, had, you know, you have chances to choose to go other places and you know have a relationship with the staff here. When you hear a coach like Kalani or the other guys taking it on themselves, the responsibility for some of the struggles on themselves, what does that do for you as a player? Uh, you know... As a team, you never want to be the one to point fingers. So I would hope that everyone on the team would take it as a personal thing. But when a coach takes up, you know, steps up and takes the blame for the players, you know, that's, that shows a lot of love, a lot of humility. And as a player, it makes you want to step your game up even more. Um, you know, because his job, you know, obviously he's, he doesn't have the extension right now. So his job is on the line. And for him to put himself under the bus like that and kind of take the blame for our, the way that we're playing, you know, that shows a lot of love. So it makes me just want to go out there and work even harder for him. You're a local kid, grew up here in state. How important is the series with Boise State for, for you guys in the program right now and, and just for the program in general? I mean, I think you just signed a 10-year extension or whatever with them. So, mm -hmm. you, And obviously rivalry is now dropped up. Do you guys see this as a series that kind of it needs to be played? You need to play the Broncos and that sort of thing, I guess? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, me personally, I have a lot of hard feelings towards towards Boise State, and that's been since ever, ever since I was a little kid um, when they beat Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl on those little trick plays. And my, my uncle, C.J. Ayu, was playing for Oklahoma. And so ever since then, you know, I've kind of had hard feelings for Boise State. Um, but as far as it goes for BYU, it's, it's, a very, it's a deep game for us, you know. It's a game that we haven't been able to win very consistently in the past. And so as far as this game coming up, it's, it's a big deal to all of us, especially with our record right now. You know, we don't want to go into next week 2-5. and five. Um, right now we should be 4-2 and two with uh, the teams that we've been playing. And so for this game to play against the 13, number 13, number 14 team in the nation, you know, it's a big deal for sure. Is it nice to have this opportunity and, you know, the expectations are on them, they're expected to win the game, you know, being the ranked team and you guys coming off, you know, three straight losses, do you get a little more freedom just in the sense of, hey, we're going to shock everybody again? Um, yeah, I mean, the whole season we've kind of been picked to lose almost every game. And so 
with that mindset and knowing that we're not expected to win kind of lets us loosen up a little bit and know that we have nothing to lose. Um, you know, we can go out there and take the shots that we need to take, take the risks that we need to take, and, you know, just try to go out there and make plays and try to come out on top. How do you expect to match up with Boise? Like, maybe what areas do you think that you guys as a team can exploit uh, on Saturday? Um, I mean, with the quarterback situation at, at Boise State, you know, their starter got hurt, but the second string came in and did some really good things. Um, for me personally, I'd like to get at that quarterback and try to get him flustered up a little bit, you know, bring pressures and um, kind of get him out of his element. Don't let him get comfortable in the pocket. Um, don't let him get into a rhythm. And I feel like if we can get that quarterback out of, out of a rhythm, then their whole offense will kind of start to kind of expose themselves, I guess. All four of your home games this year will have been against ranked teams. Does that say anything about just the scheduling or just how you guys go about doing things as an independent to you? Um, that says a lot. I mean, as a as a D1 athlete, you want to play the best, biggest games. You know, you want to play against the best teams and, and showcase yourself and what you can do against some of the top talent in the nation. And so to be able to go against, you know, four ranked teams at home, you know, that's, that's really fun to me personally. Um, just the competition and the atmosphere that it brings to the stadium, to the fans, to the players. Um, it definitely changes the whole, you know, our mojo throughout the week. Any other questions? Is it tough when you're on defense and the offense has a big long drive, so you've been watching on the sideline, but then it doesn't result in a touchdown. It's either field goal or they get stopped. What does that do for you guys when you guys have to go back on the field when that didn't get that that final result you guys want? Yeah, it's it's pretty. It kind of it kind of guts you out a little bit, you know, to see that the offense drives the whole field, takes off all that time, and then comes out with nothing. Um, especially when it's, if it's a turnover or you know a missed field goal. You know, that kind of stuff kind of gets at the defense a little bit. You know, we provide a lot of opportunities, as many as we can, for the offense. And they go out and do their thing, you know, move the ball, get all these yards, make big plays, and then don't reward themselves or the team with a touchdown or three points, you know. That, that can get pretty discouraging when it happens multiple times throughout a game.